Hello and welcome to the Midweek Connection on Thursday, May 4th at First Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we actually haven't done one of these in a couple weeks, so we thought we'd go ahead and resume. Things have been busy, out of town, different other things, but nonetheless, God's Word remains and it is always useful for instructing us and correcting us and encouraging us in our faith. So we're going to do what we usually do, and that is read our daily lectionary texts, pray about it, and have a little brief discussion on um, what we might learn from it today. So let's go ahead and get started. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day, the many blessings that you have provided for us, and the opportunity again that we have to be in your word today. I pray that you would be blessed and that we would be blessed uh, through the, the reading and the hearing and the discussion about your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting today with Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises, for God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God is King over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew prophetic reading today comes from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 1 through 14. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them and the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, 
and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 23. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with the spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our transgress uh, trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of obser observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Why do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. All these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply human commands and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in, proposed, in promoting self-imposed piety, humility, and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. Our gospel today is from Luke chapter 6, verses 39 through 49. And let's see, where is 39? There it is. Jesus also told them a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil, for it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house, but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. And back to our psalm, Psalm 68. Let God rise up, let his enemies be scattered, let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful, let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity that the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, 
when you marched through the wilderness. The earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. The Lord gives the command. Great is the company of those who bore the tidings. The kings of the armies, they flee, they flee. The women at home divide the spoil, though they stay among the sheepfolds. The wings of a dove covered with silver, its pinions with green gold. When the Almighty scattered kings there, snow fell on Zalman. O mighty mountain, mountain of Bashan, O many-peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan, why do you look with envy, O many-peaked mountain, at the mount that God desired for his abode, where the Lord will reside forever? With the mighty chariotry, twice ten thousand, thousands upon thousands, the Lord came from Sinai into the holy place. You ascended the high mount, leading captives in your train, and receiving gifts from people, even from those who rebel against the Lord God's abiding there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation, and to God the Lord belongs escape from death. But God will shatter the heads of his enemies, the hairy crown of those who walk in their guilty ways. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan, I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, so that you may bathe your feet in blood, so that the tongues of your dogs may have their share from the foe. Your solemn processions are seen, O God, the procession of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers in the front, the musicians last, between them girls playing tambourines. Bless God and the great congregation, the Lord, O oh, you who are of Israel's fountain. There is Benjamin, the least of them, in the lead, the princes of Judah in a body, the princes of Zebulun, the princes of Naphtali. Summon your might, O God. Show your strength, O God, as you have done for us before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings bear gifts to you. Rebuke the wild animals that live among the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the people. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Let bronze be brought from Egypt. Let Ethiopia hasten to stretch out its hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O writers in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. And our final psalm today is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and to the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Oh, that Psalm 68 was a little bit long. I know. It? I was like, did I skip over 69? <laughs> I missed that. I was like, nope, there's there, the numbers. There it is. It's, it's still, still there. It's still there. That was a lot. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's let's start with Jeremiah first. Okay. Um, and it's, uh, for those familiar with Jeremiah, of course, he is one who is prophesying to the people prior to the fall of, of Judah, probably prior to the Babylonian exile. And here it is towards the end of this book, and he is talking about how in the midst of these prophecies of doom and gloom and exile, that restoration will return. And it's good to remember that uh, we believe that the character of God is such that he does judge wickedness, right. he <clears throat> does judge unrighteousness, and he is though a God of grace and a God of mercy and a God of forgiveness. And because we know that God established a covenant with these people, that 
he was the one that was going to be faithful to the covenant even when the people were not. Right. So even though there are consequences to their actions, those consequences uh, come to an end, that God in his wisdom and in his mercy uh, knows the time that, um, you know, essentially uh, when judgment will end, when is enough, when is the time for the people to be restored. Um, what's fascinating about even that Psalm 31, all of these uh, everlasting and continued faithfulness, all these things that are being prophesied about, we know that even for those people then that did return from exile, they themselves experienced um, uh, tribulations and persecutions and oppressions. Uh, they themselves had not been transformed into wholly righteous people. Right. And so there were still difficulties and trials that they would face. And so, so much of what we see in the Psalms can be uh, uh, fulfilled in a temporal fashion, but will ultimately be fulfilled in an eternal fashion. So some of these um, return exile, return from exile uh, descriptions are meant to be encouraging for people throughout time, that this is the character of God, and ultimately there will be a time when full restoration is established because of the mercy and the grace of God. Right, and I think that that's important to remember, and, and I think sometimes we get the judgment, sometimes we get the grace and the mercy, but reconciling that, how those both exist at the same time. Right. And so God is a God of accountability. We can't just do and, and, and be however without some accountability there, right. but yet we're not stuck in that exile or that punishment. And I think, you know, we're given this parent child relationship throughout scripture. And so when we look at that from an earthly perspective, I think that it helps us to understand that though. Mm -hmm. You have a child that you correct, but they're not stuck there. Like right. you don't put them to the side and you've messed up. We, we wouldn't treat our earthly children that way. Right. You know, we wouldn't treat our children that way and God doesn't treat us that way. And that discipline is not out of, of meanness or it's, it's sometimes character development, sometimes, <laughs> right. but sometimes it's even a safety aspect. But discipline is done in love, right. and in that we have to remember that the accountability that God um, holds us to is done in love. Absolutely. And, so, and we're not stuck once we screw up. We're not stuck there. Right. There is that welcome back in. Right. And, and I think it's, uh, we might think, well, that's Old Testament stuff. Well, clearly in Christ, everything has been made new. And yes, and yes. And even in Colossians, where Paul is writing to people that are in the church. Paul is writing to uh, the church in, uh, in Colossae and in, in how uh, they have in some way started to drift in their own faith and so the the book of Colossians is in its entirety trying to remind people of the central the centrality of Christ mm -hmm. uh, the need for us to be focused on him because there have been ways that um, traditions or uh, fancy teaching or even mythological kind of things have kind of crept into the church and people in the church have starting to place more and more emphasis on specific days or times or f periods of fasting or whatever it might happen to be, all of which can be good. And in other places of scripture, we see them actually being promoted as a way for us to, to have discipline. But Paul in Colossians is referring to people who place an inordinate amount of attention on those things, where they have forgotten that it's faith in Christ and not their adherence that gets them into a right relationship with the Lord, that uh, we are saved by grace alone and we are saved unto a purpose. And there are times that those uh, uh, times and seasons where different disciplines can be useful in that regard, mm -hmm. but if those times and seasons replace faith in Christ as the sole necessary aspect of salvation, then it gets wrong. So uh, Paul, when he's talking about um, don't be taken captive through philosophy or empty deceit or human traditions, that's that's what he's referring to there. And even at the end, uh, verse 23, uh, talking about uh, different regulations and do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, 
when Paul says these indeed have the appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, humility, and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. Again, Paul is not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. What right. he's saying is for some of these people in Colossae, the bathwater had become the whole of the thing. Right. And, and they were practicing these things to the detriment of actually preaching about Christ. Right. Just, becomes, to, just to throw that yeah, out there, right? Yeah. right. <laughs> they become, yeah, that becomes their focus is, is adherence, adherence to law. And law doesn't, right. um, law does not come above. It has its place. Right. It has its place. Even as we're reading this here in Colossians and it's talking about, um, oh, maybe it, talking about the flesh. I mean, right, that, right. There's that yes, sort of it's in there, but it's, and it's talking about made to be alive. No, let me think here. Let me see. Um, oh, the whole, no, further down, verse 19, not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body right. nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows with growth, the growth that is in, in God. And the thing is, is you have the head, you have the body, you have the heart, you have the, the ligaments, you have the parts and everybody, everything has a part. They're all important. They're all good. These traditions, these laws are not bad, but the whole body, it's, it's the, it's, it's the growth of the entire body. It's the it is, right. And so it's, know the place that those things go right recognize the role that they play and don't give them more right. weight and power or authority than Absolutely. what they should have so in connection to the uh the jeremiah passage where the restoration of the people mm -hmm. was not based on the fact that they've started doing all of these things right again they were right. it, it was based on the fact that god was maintaining the covenant promise with his people and bringing them back uh, knowing when to say when um, their behavior in some ways probably hadn't even changed you know, right. there was still unrighteousness in the people of Israel even though God was bringing them back right. so so that's the constant struggle that we as humans regularly face is am I earning God's approval or am I loved and approved by God but being called into deeper relationship with him and so that that line there might be a fine line, but it's important for us to remember that the only way we can even respond faithfully is because God has already given us his spirit through his son, Jesus Christ. Right. It was through his actions. Was, you know, it tells us right. it was nailed to the cross with him. I yep. mean, that's pretty plain. You know, it was through his actions and it not was, through ours. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I think Jesus in his parables that he's telling in Luke 6, uh, um, emphasize that point as well. Uh, this is coming at the end of Luke's um, de uh, depiction of the Sermon on the Plain. It's not, you know, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, Sermon on the Plain in Luke, uh, but many of the same kind of teachings. But that whole idea in there about no good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. And again, this is, are we right with Christ? Mm -hmm. And if you are right with Christ, then you will respond appropriately. You right. will do those things that demonstrate your faith in him. Um, and so much of that, even uh, that the start of that in verse 39, Jesus told them another parable, can a blind person guide a blind person? And I think this is a lot of what Paul was talking about in Colossians, where, hey, you can get right with God if you do these things. Well, that's just a blind person leading other blind people. Right. You might very well practice those things after the Spirit has indwelled within you, but they're certainly not gonna uh, compel the Spirit to be in you. Um, right. And so, uh, because if you think those are the things that are gonna save, that's the equivalent of having that log in your own eye, because we right. are all going to violate the law. We are all right. gonna fall short of, of those requirements. And if I have to like, oh, I'm gonna judge you for your little right. thing, but I'm falling victim to worse things, Jesus is like, hey, you know, that's that's not it. Do better. Right. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but again, that do better is you can't do enough. You've got to have your foundation on Christ. Right. It's, it's almost uh, 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 hyperbole that Jesus is speaking any of those things. Yeah, you, you know, take that speck out after you've removed the log. How are you going to remove the log? Well, build your foundation on Christ. Build your foundation on Christ. Right. right. Yeah. 
Mm. I think as we were reading all of this today, I was ready. I was ready for you to ask me, what do you think today, Natalie? Oh, oh I yeah, had a yeah. Thought. You had a, oh, what? I had a Share, thought please share today. some more. That's great. I think, and, and we've kind of touched on it, but I think even throughout the Psalms today and through all of these passages, and I kind of already said it a little bit, but the whole thing is, is we are this body of Christ and we do have this um, role to play. And throughout these scriptures today, and even within the Psalms, you know, we don't always get this. Sometimes we have the the despair and that, but really it was singing praise to mm-hmm. God and this recognition of who God is. And it's this recognition of the character of God. And it's this recognition that through his actions and through his invitation and his covenant, through all of that, that we have been invited into this. And then once we are invited, once we accept that invitation, we do all have a role to play. And everyone's role is not the same, you know, just like the body parts are not the same. They have different jobs. They have different responsibilities. But yet, all necessary, all important for health and functionality. And um, and and so with that, as a body of Christ, we are called into that covenant relationship Play our part, play our role, do it well, you know, produce good fruit, all the while recognizing that as we play our part through our actions, that's not what gets us there. Those actions, I think, can draw us closer and that relationship can grow, but it was God who extended the invitation yeah. first and foremost. So. Mm. Yep. Those were my thoughts. Those were your just thoughts. Tie all that. <laughs> Psalm forty-seven and ending with Psalm one thirteen, just like you were saying, all of the uh, praises that are extended to God. Uh, you know, Psalm forty-seven, verse uh, six. You know, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises for God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with the psalm. Um, yeah, I think that should be the the regular posture in which we find ourselves. Uh, giving glory and honor to God and to God alone for his goodness and mercy and grace to us, giving us the opportunity to respond in faith. Uh, But certainly he was the one who initiated that faith in the first place. And so that's why we sing praises to him. It's like as as good as Natalie is with a lot of things, we're not singing praises to Natalie. You know, we're singing praises (laughs) to God. We're grateful to Natalie for all of the good things that she does. But, uh, you know, that's not enough to earn God's love but in response to God's love. So, um, yeah, well, that's about it. So thanks for joining us, everybody, today. I'm sorry we missed it for the last couple of weeks. It's good to be back in the back in the Word together. Um, would you like to go ahead and close us in prayer? I would be happy to. Excellent. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time today in your Word. Thank you for, um, thank you for loving us. Um, thank you for inviting us and welcoming us and even... When we do fall short in our actions, thank you that your arms are open wide. Um, Even through accountability, we are welcomed back in in grace and mercy and love. And we thank you for that. And I pray that we open our hearts and that we do recognize the role um, and the character of you in this relationship. And that we can lean into you and that we can trust you and that we can... um, fully engage with you in a way that we grow and love you more each day and and then are able to love others around us, that we don't try to hold others to um, this impossible standard that we ourselves can't live up to. Um, help us to love well, love you, and to love one another well. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.